This video is sponsored by Skillshare. The first 500 people to go to skl.sh slash polyphonic26 will get two months of learning for free. It's hard to point precisely to the birth of a genre, but people love to do it nonetheless. When it comes to rock and roll, people like to name pioneers like Chuck Berry, Little Richard, and Bo Diddley. And yes, all of these artists did work throughout the 50s to codify rock and roll and turn it into a phenomenon. But long before Elvis was stealing the hearts of teenagers, one artist was laying the groundwork for all that was to come. Before Chuck Berry's duck walks and guitar solos, before Gory Carter's Rock A While or Jackie Brenston's Rocket 88, there was Sister Rosetta Tharp, a woman known today as the godmother of rock and roll. Let's take a closer look. Rosetta Tharp's talent was evident from a young age. She learned guitar at just four years old, and by the time she was six, she had joined a troupe of evangelical musicians with her mother. That troupe toured across the American South, displaying and honing Tharp's natural skills. And as she grew up, she started to develop her own unique sound. The biggest influence on that sound was the gospel music that Tharp was surrounded by growing up. But she added her own influences in too, pulling from the growing genre of rhythm and blues and using her talent on the guitar to tear out greasy solos. Her music also owed a lot to jazz, in particular the off-kilter rhythms of swing music. Tharp would even play alongside some of the swing greats. In October of 1938, she joined Cab Calloway on stage at the famous Cotton Club. In that same month, Tharp went into the studio for the first time. She cut four songs in that session, and these songs would launch her to stardom. From the very beginning, you can hear the sounds that would define Tharp's entire career. She smashed gospel lyrics together with greasy blues licks and sensual rhythms. Tharp also had a powerful voice and a natural charisma that comes through beautifully in her early work. That's All was one of the first four recordings, and it was a perfect look at what would come in her career. Preachers fighting one another think they're doing well. All they want is your money, and you can go to hell, and that's all. Another one of these early recordings was called Rock Me, looking forward to the genre Tharp into a star and made her one of the first gospel singers to have widespread mainstream success. Part of that success was because her music was raw and sexual, which appealed to growing secular audiences. Of course, this also caused a stir in the religious community. But Tharp didn't let the church's expectations stop her. She would spend the next few years riding the train of stardom, pushing any boundaries she could. The biggest song of Tharp's career was probably 1945's Strange Things Happening Every Day, which hit number two on Billboard's Race Chart, a chart that would later be renamed the Rhythm and Blues Charts. All we hear church people sing, they are in it wasn't all religious songs, though. Some of Tharp's music had a sexual edge to it, like I Want a Tall Skinny Papa. I want a tall skinny papa. Yes! I want a tall... This kind of music raised scandal in the gospel community, and it wasn't the only way that Tharp was defying the church's strict sexual rules. It's hard to confirm, but a lot of evidence points towards Tharp being bisexual. In the late 1940s, she started a close relationship with Mary Knight, another gospel singer, a relationship that was likely romantic in nature. At the time, the gospel world considered it an open secret that Knight and Tharp were lovers. Unfortunately, due to homophobic taboos at the time, it's difficult to confirm whether Tharp and Knight were actually lovers, as both of them denied it. Either way, the two had musical chemistry. They played together for years, going on tour together and even recording. You can hear this play out on the duet, You Gotta Move. Yes, you got to move. You got to move. I said you got to move. You got to move. You got to move. You got to move. Yes, you got to move. Follow the Lord. And Knight probably wasn't the only woman who Tharp had relations with. In Gail Wald's biography of Tharp, one of the singer's musicians recalls walking in on her in bed with two women. These kinds of stories show that it wasn't just Tharp's music that made her a rock star. She lived one of the first true rock star lives, too, touring the country and making mischief. 
and you can see that come through in her performances. Just look at this 1963 version of Dint It Rain. You can feel Farp's charisma through the screen as she shreds the guitar and belts it out, all while dancing in heels. But even as she was pushing boundaries, Tharp stayed true to her gospel roots. She became famous for looking up to the heavens as if channeling God as she performed. Throughout most of her career, a woman playing guitar like Tharp did was simply unheard of. But she wasn't shy about her talents. People who saw her play often said she played guitar like a man. But Tharp didn't agree with that. Can't no man play like me, Tharp said. I play better than a man. And Tharp didn't just defy the expectations of her gender, she defied racial expectations too. On one of her tours, Tharp brought along the Jordanaires as a backing band. The Jordanaires were an all-white vocal group who were members of Nashville's legendary Grand Ole Opry at the time. A black woman playing in front of a group of white male backup singers was exceedingly rare, but that image resonated with a young, aspiring singer named Elvis Presley. Presley idolized Tharp and would bring on the Jordanaires to sing with him later in his career. Gordon Stoker, one of the Jordanaires, explained that Tharp's guitar playing was what drew Elvis to her. That's what really attracted Elvis, her pickin. He liked her singing, but he liked that pickin first because it was so different. You can see this pickin in one of my favorite moments of Tharp's guitar playing, a performance of Up Above My Head on the show TV Gospel. <laughs> This kind of guitar playing that inspired a young Chuck Berry, who would go on to set the early standard for rock guitar. Chuck Berry even once called his entire career one long Sister Rosetta Tharp impersonation. And it wasn't just Berry and Elvis, Johnny Cash shouted Tharp out as one of his early influences at his Rock and Roll Hall of Fame induction. As the 1950s began and more rock and roll came about, Tharp's career began to take a downturn. The gospel audiences started to flock to her contemporary, Mahalia Jackson, and new rhythm and blues acts were popping up every day. But the influence of Tharp remained. In 1957, she brought her sound to the United Kingdom on a four-month tour. And then in 1964, she went back to the UK while touring Europe alongside blues legend Muddy Waters. These European blues tours exposed Britain to American blues and helped start the British blues revival, a movement that launched the careers of groups like the Rolling Stones, Fleetwood Mac, and Led Zeppelin. Despite this influence, Rosetta Tharp was forgotten to history for a long time. People celebrated the likes of Elvis, Chuck Berry, and Johnny Cash for what they did to rock and roll, but they didn't look at the woman who influenced all of them. Lately though, there's been a revival. In 2011, a BBC documentary on Sister Rosetta Tharp helped bring awareness of her influence to the music world. In 2013, that documentary aired to an American audience on PBS, and as people began to realize the influence that Tharp had, a groundswell of support for her grew until she was inducted into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame in 2018. Rock and roll was more than just a musical revolution. It reached across all of culture, radically shifting the world and paving the path for our present existence. And so it's important to look back at the greats who revolutionized rock and roll. And it's important to remember that the first of these greats, the person who pioneered rock and roll and set the stage for all that was to come, was Sister Rosetta Tharp, a black, and probably queer woman. Rosetta Tharp may have gotten an early start on her guitar playing, but it's never too late for you to give it a crack. If Tharp's story inspired you to take up the guitar, you can get started with Mike Boyd's Guitar Fundamentals class on Skillshare. In just over an hour, Mike Boyd will teach you everything you need to start your journey to guitar greatness. And if that doesn't sound right for you, Skillshare has thousands more classes you can choose from. Skillshare is an online learning community for creatives of all levels. Whether you're looking to learn a new skill or hone your existing abilities, Skillshare will have a class for you.
Lately, I've been getting a lot of people asking me how they can start making their own videos. If you want to get started, Jake Bartlett's Animating with Ease in After Effects gives some great tips that can be used for motion graphics. So if you want to channel your creativity or set out on a path towards self-improvement, you can get started today by going to skl.sh slash polyphonic26. The first 500 people to click that link will get two months of Skillshare absolutely free. After that, an annual subscription is less than 10 bucks a month, so it's a really affordable way to improve yourself. So why not give it a shot? Make sure you click the link in the description to show Skillshare that I was the one who sent you.